Personal finance practice problem using OneNote. Projected health care costs. Prepare to get financially fit by practicing personal finance. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, would like to follow along, we're in the icon left-hand side, practice problem tab in the 9090 projected healthcare costs tab. Also take a look at the immersive reader tool or practice problems, typically in the text area too, with the same name, same number, but with transcripts. Transcripts that can be translated into multiple languages, either listened to or read in them. Information up top, we are imagining we have current healthcare costs at $7,000 and we want to project what the healthcare costs might be in the future, possibly for budgeting into the future. One way we might think about that is to try to guess or estimate what inflation is and assume that the healthcare costs will go up with relation to inflation. Now, typically in the United States, the Federal Reserve shoots for like one and 3% inflation. It could go above that at times, but that's kind of what they're aiming for oftentimes in order to have enough money in the system to deal with the growth without having basically deflation, which is something that could be a bad situation. So they typically shoot for like one to 3%. So we're just gonna assume that there's an increase of 2% of inflation, which would mean that the purchasing power of the dollar is basically going down by the 2%, which we can think about then the prices for things will basically go up by 2% per year. So how much would be spent uh, uh, years in the future, 10 years into the future? So if we're going 10 years out then, a couple ways we could do this, we could use a future value type of calculation, multiple types of ways we could do a future value calculation. Excel or using Excel functions is one of the nice easiest ways which I would practice doing. And it would look something like this. I usually put a negative up front. You could put the negative within, inside the calculation but the easiest, fastest way to type it is to say negative future value. The rate then we get this nice little little box down below that help us pick this up is in B2. So the rate would be that 2%. It's an annual rate. So we're just going to keep the 2%. The comma then would take us to the next argument, which would be the NPER number of periods, which would be represented here by the B5, which would be that 10 years and then comma. And notice that we don't have a payment because a payment would be an annuity calculation. And what we want to do is have a present, a future value of one, therefore two commas to get us to this argument, the present value. In other words, if we're currently at 7,000, what, uh, what's going to be the future value? So that's the present value B1, and that gives us 8,533. So if we're trying to figure out how much we might be paying in the future, representing the fact that the inflation is going to go up or the cost is going to go up with inflation that we're assuming at 2%, we're at 8,533 in 10 years. Um, so obviously that's just an estimate. We're practicing our future value calculations or time value of money calculations to prove that or to think about it a different way. We might run a table and say, okay, if we're at zero, zero, year zero at 7,000, year one, it would be increasing, right? We'd be increasing by, in essence, the 2%. So we'd be saying, okay, so we got 7,000 times 0 0.02. That's going to give us the 140 plus the 7,000 is the 7,140. After another year, now we'd be at the 7,140. It would go up by another 2%. So times 0 0.02, that would give us the 142.8, about 143. If we add that, then to the 7140, our prior amount, that's gonna give us the 2782. And then of course, we'll take that, it's gonna increase by another 0.02%, which would give us 146 or 145.65, more precisely, plus the 7283, and there's, there's rounding because the 7283 is rounded, but that would get us about to the 7484, and so on and so forth, adding uh, another increase, the increase going up because we have a, a prior balance that's higher. And if we did that all the way down to 10 years, we would expect at year 10, we're at the 8,533. Now this is a good way to do it because here you can see not only where we end at the end result, but you can see the rise or the increase in price or in cost if we had the 2% inflation. When budgeting, you can see how this kind of eats into your current salary. If your salary is not increasing, with these costs, then that's going to be a problem. 
if we want to prove this with our present value calculation, just to practice our present value calculations, I could say, okay, if I have this end result of the 8,533 after 10 years, if I use my present value calculation, bringing it back down to the current period, I can do that. That should take me back down to the 7,000. I could do that with this calculation. Again, I put a negative up front because that's the easiest way to type it. Probably not the most proper way to do it, but negative present value, the rate then would be once again the 2%. That's what's being represented by B2, comma, the number of periods we're gonna say is gonna be 10 periods, comma, two commas, because it's not an annuity. I don't want a, a series of payments, uh, but we're gonna present value one on, on one item. So two commas, and then I'm gonna take that in number, which is the 8533, that gets us back down to the 7,000. So it's kind of the opposite you know, of the future value calculation. If I present value that back, then I get back to the 7,000. You also might wanna just to play with your present value and future value calculations, set up your table a little bit differently. So you might say, for example, in year zero, you had 7,000 and then do a future value calculation. Instead of increasing it this way, we can use a future value calculation for each period. So it might look something like this. We'd say that there, there would be a future value, which would be negative. I'm looking at this cell right here. How did we calculate it? we'd say negative uh, of the rate. So the rate is gonna be, what did I say, the 2%? And then the comma, the number of periods. This time, the number of periods, we're gonna say this is just for one year out. So notice I'm referencing this cell right here with the K3. It's gonna move down as we go down to year two, year three, year four, and so on. So there's no absolute reference there. And then uh, two commas, because it's not an annuity to get to the present value which we said was would be represented by by this 7000 here so that gets us up to the 7000 for uh, 140 then we can take the difference here between the 7000 140 and the prior period 7000 to get that difference of the 140 so just another way to format your tables that you might see using a future value if i did that in year two we'd have this calculation we'd have the same 7,000 in the base year, or you may not even have this whole column. You could just equals the base year, for example, uh, uh, year one, for example, and now we have two, two years out. But now we got the negative future value. The rate is once again, the 2%, comma, number of periods is now referencing, this K4 is referencing this two. So it moved down from K3 to K4. Notice that this first cell, the rate did not move down because we put dollar signs before the b and the two making it absolute and then comma comma the present value is seven thousand notice that this one moved down from seven thousand to seven thousand if we were to eliminate this whole base year and just use like the current year right here we could make this last one absolute and reference just that one cell and then i take the difference between the two the seven two eight three minus the seven one four zero to get the one thirty the one forty three and so we're repeating same data here. So we could do that again. Here, we would be taking the future value of the 7,000 at 2% rate for three periods, right? And then you've got the difference between this and this and so on and so forth. So this is another way that you can, in essence, uh, construct the same data, getting down to the bottom line after 10 years that we saw once again was at the 8533. So good practice on the you know, few on the time value of money calculations, always great tools to be practicing with and working our mind around.